First, we're going to start on the financial topic. And um, really the cost of production, if you were with us at the beginning of this series, looked at using an enterprise budget to do this. And that's what we're going to do tonight. And really the reason why you might want to do something like this, you know, number one is to look at the finances of your operation. What's your bottom line? What's your cost structure? But then by doing that, you can look at your break evens, which I'm going to define. And, you know, what price do you need to sell your cattle for to cover your variable costs, your total costs? And that can really set you up to make marketing decisions, make insurance and risk management decisions. So this is really, in, in our mind, step one of risk management on your farm is just knowing the finances of where you're at, looking for opportunities to be more efficient, and then using that in your marketing and your insurance decisions. So before we dive into that enterprise budget or that statement, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, cow-calf operations in general here in Kansas. So what I have up here are um, all of the KFMA farms, Kansas Farm Management Association farms that we work with here at the university. There's trained economists across the state, five different associations that work with these farms annually um, to do tax planning and performance analysis. But part of that um, is also to evaluate their financial situation and, you know, using those summary numbers, do some benchmarking across the state. So all of the farms going back to the 1970s, you can see the average return over variable costs per cow. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of variation in this number across time, but typically, you know, in the bad years, it's about losing $50 per cow over variable costs to right around making $100 or $150 above variable cost. Uh, 2014 was the extreme outlier that you see here. That was coming off the drought. A lot of cattle, a lot of cows were sold then because we just didn't have the feed for them. And we saw a really good demand that year and just you know astronomical returns in our cow-calf herds. But typically what you see here is the cattle cycle. So we have some good returns, the herd expands. Um, we have a lot of cows, a lot of calves. All of a sudden we have a lot of supply and um, prices go down. Then we have contraction in the herd. It's not as much profitability. We start selling cows and we have less inventory. And then the cycle starts over again as prices come up, we add more cows. So again, you can just see this variation over time, but on average, um, across our KFMA farms here in Kansas, it's about $71 over variable costs that we're making per cow. Now, the point I want to drive home here is um, across time, there's a lot of variation in the average return for a cow herd, but in any given point in time, there's a lot more variation in different operations. So, Another way of saying that is even when we have good prices and good years in the cow-calf industry, there are still farms and ranches that are losing money. And then vice versa, when we have some really tough years, low prices, high input cost years, there are still operations that are making money in the cow-calf industry. So there's a lot of management things that can be done to look at that cost structure and still be profitable in some difficult times. So to illustrate this, what I have up here is it's a five-year study looking at our KFMA farms again of the different profit categories. So within these five years, um, a third of the operations are in the high profit category, a third in the middle, and a third in the low profit category. So what we're going to look at is what, what divides them into those categories. First, if you start with the bottom line, you'll see all of the farms on average had about $2.73 over their variable cost that they made um, it, with all the farms combined. Now, as I said, there's a lot more variation between operations. And to illustrate that here, our top farms made about $200 per cow in this same time frame that our bottom operations lost about $183 per cow. So that's a difference of $380 per cow based on their return over their variable cost. 
So what's driving that difference? If we look at the income side, it's about $150 difference in income per cow between the top and the bottom third of profitable operations. So our top operations were making about $835 per cow at the same time that our low profitable operations were making about $681 per cow. Now, when you look at the cost side, you see even more difference. Um, between the top and the bottom operations was $225 difference in cost. So our top operations could run a cow on variable costs about $638 a year, where our bottom profitable operations, it took $864 per year to run that cow in variable costs. To break this down even further, um, what's driving those differences? So on the income side, we see more labor allocated to livestock and just shear more cattle on the operation. So more specialized in the area of cow-calf production and less um, other enterprises on the farm, it's more, more labor allocated to the livestock. And then an average of 183 cows on our uh, top operations for profitability and down to 106 on our low profitable operations. So I think that kind of points to on these lower operations, they probably have a more crop focus and the cow herd's a little bit more of a side enterprise. Um, the other thing you see very different is the number of calves per cow. And on our top operations, it's about a 93% calves sold per cow, so 93% uh, weaning rate. On our bottom ones, that's about 88%. So you really need calves to sell. Um, probably no, no surprise there. One thing I didn't really circle or point out is the price that's driving them into the profitable category. So our top ones sold their calves for $163 per hundredweight. Our bottom's 161, so not a huge difference there. And our middle actually had the lowest sales price of $160 per hundred weight. So price isn't, and this study has been replicated across time and price typically does not come out as a significant difference between profit categories. Now on the uh, cost side, it's really hard to look at any cost that's making a big difference other than feed. So between the top and the bottom operations, about $158 difference in feed cost, and that doesn't include pasture. So our top operations, about $252 in feed cost per year versus $400 per year on our less profitable operations. So, you know, boiling this down again, as we're getting into this enterprise budgeting or cost of production statement, Really what you wanna do is make sure you're capturing your own costs because there's so much variation on different operations as to what these costs are and what their income levels are. So let's go ahead and dive into this enterprise budgeting or cost of production statement. As I just said, having good records of your own operation are really the key to making this a useful statement to analyze and use for management purposes. You want to do one enterprise at a time, and this, you know, is fairly obvious when we are budgeting for corn and soybeans and wheat. But if you have different herds on your operation, such as registered and commercial, or a spring calving and a fall calving herd, you really want to do an enterprise budget for each one of those herds. Um, if you're keeping your calves past weaning, it also might be good to do a backgrounding budget just for that stage of growth. If it's just for a little while after weaning, you know, you could wrap that just into the cow-calf budget. But basically, you want to evaluate one enterprise at a time. You also want to budget on a per head basis, so a per cow basis. And I'm going to show you how to do that here. And that really, too, helps evaluate um, just that cost structure and those break-even prices for selling your calves on a per head and per hundred weight basis. And then the best way to do this is to project for the coming year what that um, enterprise budget might look like. What are your break-evens? What's your bottom line numbers? And then as you're going throughout the year, 
replacing your projections with the actual costs and reevaluating that statement as you go. The really difficult thing on doing a CalCAF budget is what to do with replacement <laughs> heifers. So there's two ways, and there may be more, but these are the two ways that I typically think is easiest to handle replacement heifers. So the first one is what I'm going to show tonight, and that is just assuming the cost of raising replacement heifers within the cow-calf budget. So you're going to see when I look at feed costs and breeding costs and labor and everything, that includes while we're raising the heifers on the farm within that budget. The other thing you could do is have a standalone heifer development budget. So when you sell the calves in the cow-calf budget, you're selling all the calves. And that money from selling those heifers is just put into that budget. Then you have a separate budget for growing those heifers. And then you actually buy them back into the cow-calf budget as a developed heifer. Um, typically, when you take your cull cows out, those uh, heifers that are ready to calve come in. So that's two approaches and neither one is right or wrong. It's just however you prefer to do it and how it makes more sense to you. So I think the easiest way to talk about making an enterprise budget is to just present one. So I've just um, have a, an average herd here for the state of Kansas that we're gonna walk through an example of an enterprise budget. So first we're gonna look at the income and really the three components that go into this. So we're gonna be selling weaned steer calves, weaned heifer calves, cull cows, and you know there may be some other income. If you have some livestock disaster payments or you know we had some coronavirus food assistant payments. So there might be some other income sources that you could put in there in any special given year. Um, but typically we're gonna be looking at what are we going to sell these animals for in the coming year? So I have some prices up here. Um, if you've never used beefbasis.com, they have a very good forecasting tool that looks at the futures market, looks at a historical basis. Um, here I use Salina to kind of look at what these prices might be next fall. But it's a good tool to look at because obviously, you know, trying to figure out what price you're going to sell your calves at a year out is quite difficult. So we're going to put those projected prices in. Again, as you go throughout the year, tweak those prices as to what the markets are doing. Um, and then the next thing is the quantity. So what weight are these animals going to be sold at? I have my steers at 550 pounds, my heifers at 500, and then my cold cow is about 1300 in this example. And then how many of these things are gonna be sold per cow? So that's my per cow percentage. And so if you look over here, for this example, I have a hundred cows that are bred every year. That's kind of my running herd average for this operation. If I had a 90% uh, weaned calf crop, that'd be 45 steers and 45 heifers. So I'm gonna sell 45 steer calves so that's where I'm counting, accounting for 0.45 of a steer calf per cow. I'm gonna have 45 heifer calves, but in this example, I'm gonna keep 15 for replacements. So I'm actually only selling 30 heifers. So that's where I'm doing 0 0.30 of a weaned heifer calf per cow. And then I'm gonna sell 15 cold cows. So um, taking our cold cow weight, price times 0.15 gives us our cold cow income. So as you can see there, we have a column for our total per year per cow. We're bringing in about $916 per cow according to this budget. And then I also have the numbers for the entire herd. So if we multiply that by 100 cows, that's $91,650 in income for this herd. Now, next we're gonna go to the cost side. So first I'm gonna start with feed cost. And like I tried to emphasize earlier, feed is the largest portion of your cost and often separates the profitable operations from the not so profitable. So really spending some time putting these together um, is worth your while in making this a useful tool. 
So you can see the different categories that I've broke those feed costs into. So pasture, residue or cover crops, hay and forage, and then your grain, protein, or mineral. So in each of those, I'll show you how I derive those different costs. So first for pasture, I think this is fairly straightforward. I listed all the different pastures this herd's gonna have. So we have some um, that they're gonna be out in May through November. We have another part of the herd that's in one pasture from May to June, and then July to November in a different pasture. We have our bull pasture. But basically what I'm doing is how many acres of pasture and then what's my rent per acre. Fairly straightforward if you're cash renting pasture. Now, if you own some of these pastures yourself, I think there's two good methods for valuing that. One is just value it at an average rental rate that you pay for your other pastures or your own cost. So having your property taxes in there, any maintenance and upkeep annual cost, you know, you do have a cost of owning that, you know, and um, maybe your interest on that land that you're owning and paying a loan on. So it's so you need to have some sort of rent per acre, even if you own that ground is the bottom line. So taking that rent times the acres, you get your total pasture cost. And then we have a hundred cows in this herd running herd average. So that gets our per cow cost. Now, again, this is accounting for the pasture that the heifers are on, that the bulls are on, but we're dividing by the number of breeding cows to get our total pasture cost per cow. It'd be the same method if you're out on crop residue or cover crops, just you rent per acre times the number of acres. Um, in this case, we have some corn stalks. I have a rental rate on there. Again, if it's your own land, there is still a cost in having your cattle out there, where, you know, fencing, water, things like that. So um, there should be a rent per acre to, to everything that you're doing if it's a cost to you. And then cover crops, you know, this could be establishment costs. What's your seed, fertilizer, machinery uh, cost to, to put that in for grazing purposes? Total cost, and then divide that by our 100 cows to get the cost per cow. Now we wouldn't get into hay and forage and feedstuffs, it gets a little more complicated. So what I did here is kind of come up with a ration of how much hay or forage my cattle are consuming. And how I did that is look at a pounds per day and the number of days that they're gonna be in that dry lot consuming that forage. So, and this can be hard to estimate. Um, typically in our breeding cows, depending on their cycle, it might be, two, two and a half, three percent of their body weight per day that they're going to need on an as-fed basis of different forages. A lot of our extension agents do work with a program called Brands, um, that like B-R-A-N-D-S, Brands, that is a balancing software to help you come up with a ration for both feedstuffs and forages for your cattle. So, you know, however you derive these, Bottom line is making sure you get a good, accurate account of what you're actually feeding, accounting for, you know, loss as there, you got bail rings out there, you know, whatever wastage there might be. So coming up with these pounds, the days you're going to feed them, the total pounds, and then, you know, for 100 cows, how much is that going to be for your five bulls, for your 15 heifers, the total pounds needed. And then how you value this forage is typically just what's the going market rate for brome, prairie hay, and silage. You know, you might be raising these things yourself, but valuing, valuing them to the cattle herd at the going market rate of what you would sell them for. Our feedstuffs typically are a little more on the purchased feed side. So coming up with some average prices you're going to pay for those feedstuffs. And then again, trying to evaluate what are you going to feed for how many days. So in my example here, my cows are going to be consuming four and a half pounds of dried distillers for 90 days and then one pound for 60 days when they're out on the um, corn stalk residue. So, you know, just putting that together and trying to come up with what is your annual feed going to be for your entire herd. And again, accounting for those bulls and those heifers. Um, even though we're dividing by the 100 cows, because that is a cost to the cow herd 
as we're developing those heifers and needing those herd bulls. So end of the day, that is how I'm deriving these different feed costs. It does, you don't have to do it the same way, but bottom line, just trying to come up with what these costs are for your own operation. So my total feed cost came out to be about $543 per year per cow or 54,000 for our entire herd. So moving on to some other variable costs or cash costs with this uh, cow-calf operation, we're gonna have veterinary bills, we're gonna have marketing or sale barn fees, we're gonna be running those bulls or AIing these cows or both. We'll have some hired labor, we'll have some cash interest on whatever loan or financing that we're gonna have for this operation. So how am I deriving these things? Really for veterinary, I'm just sketching out our cows, our bulls, our heifers we're developing and our calves. What's the vaccination and parasite control for those different categories and how much is that gonna cost? So, and then I have the amount ahead that I'm gonna do that, um, that application to. You know, example here in our calf vaccines or parasite control, Right now I'm doing it to all 90, but maybe on your operation, you're only doing the ones you're retaining and not the ones you're selling. So, you know, really evaluating what that cost is and how many head you're gonna be doing that operation to. You know, our breeding soundness exams on our bulls would be under this category. And then, you know, any miscellaneous emergency vet bills, things like that, trying to capture that cost. So adding these all up and again, dividing by our 100 cows gives us about $40 per cow in veterinary costs for the year. Our marketing and sale barn, fairly straightforward, but making sure you're getting all of your costs, such as the commission, the yardage, insurance, advertising, anything that's going to go into marketing these animals. So, you know, for your cold cows and your calves, estimating that cost, the number of head you're going to send through the sale barn coming up with the total cost, and again, dividing by 100 cows. For your breeding costs, so I don't have any AI in this herd. If you did, obviously that's the way that I've looked at capturing it. But most operations that are using herd bulls, this is really the easiest way to look at it is, what's your average purchase price? So for my herd bulls, it's about 6,000 in this example. I'm going to use them for about four years. And then as a cull animal, maybe bring in about $1,400. So that is a cost per year per bull of uh, $1,150. I have five bulls in this herd. So my annual cost of those bulls is $5,750. Divided by 100 cows, again, would give me my per cow number. But this just captures that purchase cost of the bull and then how long you're gonna use that bowl for. for. For labor, the one and only thing I'm capturing in this budget is hired labor. So when we get to the bottom line number, it's actually returned to the operators, labor and management for the herd. But to capture hired labor as a cash cost, you know, if there's an employee that's salaried, um, maybe trying to figure out what percent of that employee's time is working with the cow-calf herd. So, you know, if their annual salary, if they're only 25% working for the cow herd, putting that in as a cost to the cow herd, or if it's, you know, in this situation, hours per year and dollar per hour, um, that's how I'm capturing some higher labor to this operation. And then finally, your interest costs. So this is a cash cost of financing the operation. Um, and again, this is just not interest. This isn't any principal on these loans. But if I have an operating loan for my cow herd, any ownership loans for um, buying some of those bulls or buying some cows um, if you weren't raising replacements, machinery that's being used, um, and then if we weren't charging our pasture at our, our cash rental rate, there may be some land loan that you would wrap into there. But basically, since I'm doing a cash rental rate on my ground, I'm not doing any land loan. So these are our annual interest rates and our estimated interest costs. So then on to the last category, which is fixed costs. And one thing to note here, since we're raising replacement heifers, I don't have any cost in here of purchasing replacement heifers because we didn't sell any heifer calves. 
And then I'm not charging a cow depreciation because as those heifers come in, those cows are maintaining the same average age throughout time. But we have machinery we need to capture, repairs and depreciation, utilities, fuel, taxes, farm and livestock insurance. So a lot of our overhead things in this operation. If we were purchasing replacement heifers, these are the two things we wanna capture. So the cost of that heifer, how many we're gonna buy per year, and then the depreciation. That heifer starts out at $1,000 in my example, she'll be in the herd for six years. So that's the depreciation per year. Um, depreciation on equipment is a little more tedious. What's its current value? What percent of it is used for the cow-calf operation? So what percent of it might be for another enterprise such as a cropping enterprise? And then we typically just look at 10% of equipment per year, loss in value, 5% on building and machinery. And then, so adding those up to your total cost, your total cost per cow. The rest, it is, I haven't found a good way to really itemize that out and capture it. So if you don't have good records from the past, what I would suggest is looking at your Schedule F on your tax return, maybe looking at the last three years and coming up with an average number for these different categories. So an example might be look at your utility bill on your farm taxes for the last three years. You know, maybe 25% of that or so should be charged to the cow-calf operation. So just doing an estimate of what that number might be. You know, at the end of the day, some of this might have to be a good guess or estimation of that cost. So as our whole budget comes together here, we have our total income, 916 per cow or 9,650 for the herd. Bottom line, again, this is our income that is for the operator's labor and management and ownership of this herd, about $200 over our cash costs or $33 per cow. If we look at just feed costs, again, 543 per cow, our break even on that would be $102. So what's a break even? So if we were to just cover our feed costs and make nothing else for the cow herd, this would be the price we need to sell those calves for. So the average price for our steers and heifers. If we add in our total cash costs, that makes our break even 146 in this example. So we need to sell our calves for 146 per hundred weight to cover our total cash costs. And then to cover all of our costs, all of our overhead, um, it would be $883 to run this herd year round, which would make our break even $188 per hundred weight that we need to sell those calves for on average to break even for this cow cow calf operation. So in summary, this enterprise budgeting activity can be extremely useful to find those break-evens, look at your cost of production, and then find efficiencies or inefficiencies by looking at um, similar operations in our KFMA database, for example. So you want to, again, make these at the beginning of the year and then look at, as you go out through the year, making different management decisions based on your break-evens, marketing and insurance and things that we're going to talk about later. So the good news is, if you've never done this before, we actually have a spreadsheet that these uh, little tables that came out of that will do this for you. And I have the link there. But if you go on our Ag Manager website, it's under this tools section, and it's called the KSU Detailed Cow-Calf Budget. So it's an Excel spreadsheet that does the calculations for you. There's a worksheet if you wanna gather the information you need ahead of time and then put it into the tool. And then a little tutorial video. If you're not that good with Excel, it'll walk you through how to use the spreadsheet. So with that, we're gonna have Lavelle slide back in. Um, we'll take a couple questions here before we go into the activity. We wanna stay on time, so we might just take yeah. a few questions before we go into that activity. If you have a question, go ahead and let your agent know and they will type it in the chat for us. Yeah, and we are good on time. We've at least got five minutes to do questions. So this is this is good. When should we do this? So do you want to speak to that? I've been talking a long time. 
get started now, Shad. <laughs> so, um, you know, in reality, we we do like to see you do this. Um, you know, we're creating awareness now, and um, really, uh, the main thing I think probably the key takeaway that I would encourage people to do is make sure that you do this. And so if you have time now, I would get started. The reality with budgets is probably the first time through, you're not going to be as good at it as you are in those subsequent times that you do it. So would like to see you go ahead and get started. And then next year when you do this, you're going to be better at it because you're going to track your numbers easier. It's kind of that that saying about the things that we manage, we watch. So, And Lavelle is a farm analyst. Um, what In an ideal year, when would you suggest? Like January 1st, the fall before? I know with the cropping yeah. enterprise, it's a little easier. With cow-calf, there'd be different sales dates and breeding dates with our herds. So Yeah, I would probably kind of line that up with um, the time frame. So like, you know, we, we kind of said for this presentation, just because there's so many different segments of the cow-calf operation or of uh, cattle, I mean, that we were really focusing this part on the cow calf side of it. So like if you're, if you make a lot of your sales in the fall, um, I think that a January or um, January timeframe is probably a really good time to, to look at that. It, you know, some folks will be selling those, those animals later, you know, into the spring. The problem with that is we get so dang busy with a lot of work. And so I think it kind of gets away from us if we don't kind of do it in that time frame of the winter time when um, when we're doing all of the other things like wrapping up our year end, creating our balance sheet and all of those other things. So I think it's probably a good time to look at it, doing it in the January time frame, just because I think it probably fits. But if there is a better time for your operation, do it at whatever that time frame is. Maybe not now while you're calving and it's <laughs> too below and you have enough other stress going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when it's a convenient time to do it is probably... Uh, the bottom line message there. Yeah. And then the secondary message of that would be do it again next year because your numbers will get better with time. Oh boy, that's a bit of a loaded question. So yeah. I'll let you take that one, Robin. Well, and there's no, there's a, I'm going to recognize the issue and not propose a solution necessarily, but um, what the question is asking about. So there has been a lot of um, questions raised about the sale price of calves and cattle, fed cattle, and then the retail box beef price that we're seeing and the disparity between those different numbers. And yes, that is something that is being looked at as far as transparency within the packing industry and you know why why we're seeing the things that we do. And I know that's going to be playing out. It is being discussed in some different bills in the uh, Congress right now. So I, I don't have any comments on that other than, yes, there's a recognition of that issue within this industry. And, you know, do I see a change for variable cost? I don't at this point. I think we need to see what shakes out, but um, I don't see on the cost side how this would would change too much. I think just transparencies might be what's going to come out of this. Yeah. And I think kind of the piece along with that is, um, you know, operating in the space that you have the ability to operate in and managing your costs, um, uh, like Robin laid out, knowing what those are and then um, managing that. You know, there's a big discrepancy that we have from our top third to our lower third producers in that income. And so trying to control those pieces and improving in where you're at in that in that scheme is probably, you know, the reality is probably the most effective thing that you can do. So and what I showed there, if you go on Ag Manager, um, mm -hmm. you can find that report and it is a really good benchmarking tool to see where is your cost structure. You know, are you falling in the top middle or bottom third? And they typically update that every year. So it it stays fairly current as far as prices go. 
Yeah, and really, I'm I'm glad that you showed that because I I don't know we um, we tend to maybe sometimes not get the news out as well as we should about all of those resources that are available on Act Manager, and that really is a great resource and um, encourage people to utilize that as much as possible. And on the Act Manager site, if you are not familiar with it or you haven't. Um, used it very much, there is a place on there that you can sign up to receive a weekly newsletter. Uh, Rich sends that out every Monday morning, the same time every Monday morning, has about 10 really applicable articles that are, you know, things that are happening right now. Scan through it real quick, see if there's something that's that affects you, and then um, look at those things and the resources um, that are available to you. But anytime any of those budgets and things are updated, that information is sent out and then, you know, can be something that you can utilize to kind of benchmark yourself off of uh, for your own operation. 